welcome back to the Making It podcast. So this week we have another fantastic guest on the show. Um, really good content. Obviously, this guy is running a fantastic business now. Uh, he's going from level to level. He's scaling fantastically. Just got nominated for a, a prize at the, the Tech Awards, which is fantastic. Um, you know, he's, we talk about his transition as well from, from a non-tech environment over to uh, running a tech company. Um, how that transition was and what his plans for the future are and the growth he expects. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Phil from Glow. Hi guys, welcome back to Making It. Uh, so this week we have Phil, as I've just said. Welcome to the show, Phil. Morning guys, how you doing? Yeah, good, good stuff. So really excited about today. You know, we've got we've got a lot to talk about and some very exciting things. I know Phil's working on at the moment. But first of all, Phil, take us back to, to 2005 um, when you went to university and, and talk us from there, really. How did you get to where you are today? Well, it's gone far too quickly. I can tell you that from the start, <laughs> mate. <laughs> so 15 years have flown by. Um, no, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a weird journey, man, I think, um, because obviously, well, I will go into a bit more detail about it in a bit, but I'm now the founder of this, uh, this website maintenance app uh, that we, that's just gone live recently. But yes, if, if we're going back to 2005, then um, I was actually just, <laughs> just moving to Leeds to start a building surveying degree, um, which is obviously about as unrelated to web and digital <laughs> as you can possibly get, and a lot less exciting as well. Um, no, I'm an 18-year-old lad going to uni. I didn't really, I couldn't really be asked going. I didn't want to go. I, I only went to Leeds because... Oh, I've been there. Yeah, exactly, mate. I only, I only went to Leeds because uh, my oldest brother went to Leeds. I only did building surveying because my oldest brother did building surveying. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what I wanted to do, so I just kind of copied him completely, really. Um, and stuck it out. Um, whereas my brother kind of quit uni after about two months and went back to Blackpool, which is where we're, which is where we're from. Yeah. I stuck it out, did the degree, but um, yeah, got to 2009, I think it was, and, and graduated. But of course, that was a pretty uh, tough time in the economy. Um, and, and, and no, getting a, a 2-1 in building surveying from Leeds Met wasn't putting me at the top of the tree with, uh, with recruiters and employers, you know. Yeah. So um, I think it was like eight, I mean, you'll know more than me these days, but it, I'm sure it was like 80, like every, 80 people going for every one job or something like that on average at the, at the time. It was just, yeah, it was. It's like it is now. It, it's, it's crazy. Is that right? Yeah. There's yeah. So many people are applying for jobs. I think I saw a post yesterday. Someone applied 900 applicants he had for for two jobs. And it's like, you know, you've got all that to look through. And, and obviously it's a sign of the times, isn't it? Unfortunately. And, you know. Yeah. But, People are hiring, which is good as well. But yeah, sorry to, to take us off. No, no, no. It's now, right. but, no, yeah. it's, there's, no it's, it's well, it's a good comparison. The, the two, the two, uh, the two times, I guess, aren't, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I mean, so we, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of relatively quickly realised that I was not going to have a career in building today, basically. So uh, did about a year's travelling around the world, which was great, mm -hmm. and it was all booked through a company called STA Travel. So I was quite sad to read yeah, the other week. They, they went. Did yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, 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 they were brilliant, and you know, really, they really kind of championed the sort of the student life, you oh, know. Definitely. And um, even though the student life had fin it finished for me by then, but still, yeah, we um, can try and live it on a few more years after. Don't yeah, we? of course you do. Yeah, <laughs> still trying now, mate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's quite, it's quite sad to read read that the other week when they uh, they'd gone under. But no, I kind of booked everything through then, went travelling, came back, and yeah, I think that was the point really where I just kind of canned the whole idea of being a building surveyor basically um and the brother that i referenced earlier when i started uni is the brother that i then ended up working for for a little bit actually after really? i came back from traveling yeah he's um, he's uh, he's got his own estate agent uh at the time he was in a, a little place called lytham st Anne's near blackpool which um a few of your listeners may, may well have heard of lovely little place on, on the file coast um he's over in cheshire now um but i was working for him at the time and it, it, yeah i mean i can genuinely chart um, right back to one phone call that I got off a mate while I was working for my brother, which which is exactly why I'm where I am now, really, in really? In, in, in terms of what I'm doing. Yeah, I was, I was working for me. I mean, I'm working for my brother. I probably shouldn't have been taking a phone call off a mate in the middle of the day. Um, and he he quite recently set up his own business at the time. So this was ten years ago. Yeah. And um, 
he said, oh, yeah, no, you're just chatting, you're catching up as you do, you know, on the phone with your mate, whatever. And then he, and he sort of dropped into the conversation that he just, it built his own website for this business that he'd started. And I thought, oh, that sounds quite interesting. Have a look at the website and kind of lights out was laid out and all that sort of stuff. And, and I just literally came off the back of that call thinking, oh, well, you know, quite, I've always had quite a, quite a creative eye and yeah. maybe I'll sort of look into website design and development as a, as a career opportunity. Uh, yeah. As a career option, um, and that was what kicked it off. Really, I, 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 off the back of that call, literally off the back of that call, uh, I started teaching myself how to code, um, wow. HTML and CSS and all that, all that sort of stuff, and um, looked into like home learning degrees, and they were just well expensive, so I didn't, didn't bother doing them. Taught myself, set up a little business yeah. uh, in Blackpool, and then yeah, it's been a, it's been an even more interesting right. journey, I think, over the last few years. So. Yeah. Yeah, um, you've always done quite a lot as well with with I've noticed you know startups and the small businesses and and folks yeah. towards that because that's is that a kind of side of things you thought right well that's a direction I definitely want to go with with Glow when when you found it that. Um, to tell you the truth, with 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 Glow, I mean it was born out of me leaving them. Um, so I mean if, if I go back again, I sort of I started that business and kind of had it for a couple of years on my own, hired a, hired a developer to work with me. And then we ended up kind of put comp- our company together with another, with another business. Right, okay. So they were running, they were running a, um, they were like managing social media profiles for businesses basically. And it was, it was uh, Facebook ads and that sort of stuff that they were doing. So, so for us, it was quite a complimentary service, you know, it, was, yeah. it seemed like a good idea to put them together and, and try and make it like a, a bigger sort of company. Um, I think looking back on my part, it was a little bit naive because I was quite young in business and I thought, you know, I saw this opportunity of um, a woman in, in business who'd, who'd, who'd been in kind of digital and marketing for a long time and had, had contacts in really big businesses. So I thought, yeah. whoa, you know, we could really get in front of some massive clients here and grow a little bit quicker. Um, and it sort of started off like that and then tailed off pretty quick. So. <laughs> um, I ended up leaving that business and that's, that's the truth really, Will, is in terms of why Glow was started was because I left that partnership about a year, about a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but you're right on the small business angle, it, they, they're the kind of, typically they're the clients that we've worked with over, the, yeah. over those sort of six or seven years. Um, and, and Glow really, part of Glow is, is, is really trying to bring to light the importance of, of making sure you look after your website as a as a small business owner um but also making sure you actually do something with it (laughs) because we've seen so many businesses over the years the the smaller clients who they sort of treat it a little bit like a like a business card almost like you know you set up a business you know you need a business card or you know you need a website so you get one built and then you don't really do anything with it like they just leave it um which is so do you think like yeah Website is obviously the first point of call for so many people when they're going yeah. to look at a business. You know, if someone hears, "Oh, I want to go and look at Glow," they'll go to your website. Do you think it's it's the, probably the most important thing for a small business to set up first and foremost? Uh, I think it probably de- de- depends on the type of business in, in terms of what they do, but on the, the vast majority of occasions, it's the most important thing to get yeah. set up because it represents you 24 seven, doesn't it? And of course, everybody's glued to their phone these days, researching, um, you know, what, what they're looking for. And that's primarily what people do is when they're online and they're Googling things, they're looking for answers to questions or, um, you know, that those kind of, those sort of buyer questions. So if, if you, yeah, your website's not, you know, written really good copy, it's not designed well, it's not mobile yeah. friendly, it's not secure, you know, all those sorts of things that Glow sort of helps you with. Yeah. Um, then you're immediately putting people off, aren't you, from, from the get-go, really. So, I mean, it's not just the design you guys do as well. I mean, I've, saw, I've seen various posts about, you know, cyber security and the fact that yeah. I think the post you guys put up was 43% of, of small businesses, are the t- they're the target for, for cyber security. They are. And obviously, yeah. go do things like that as well. They kind of, you know, you help with that, that maintenance as well, but also that security side. Yeah, that's the kind of that's the that's pretty much the core of Glow, really. Yeah. Really, is, is that is that security side of it and keeping basically keeping hackers at, at bay, which is uh, sometimes quite challenging, but extremely challenging if you're not doing it at all in terms of um, you know keeping software up to date, you know the latest versions of code and all that sort of stuff. And it, and it's just that 
you know, it's that type of work that your average small business owner hasn't got a clue how to do it. And nor, nor should they know how to do it if they're a, a building firm or an accountant yeah, or whatever, you know, they or stick to what they know. Yeah. Or building surveyors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably the only person with a building surveying degree that yeah, knows how to keep a WordPress like, site. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, no, that yeah, and that really is the core of Glow. There is 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 basically if well, if you think about it like um like use like a little an analogy. Think about your car. So you go out and you le lease a car or you buy a car and, and you've got it for I don't know four years, maybe four or five years. You've got yeah. the car. Well, over the over the time of having that car, you'll do things like put air in the tires and service it and MOT it and wash it and all, you know, and you do all those things because you want to make sure every time you get in the car to drive somewhere, the wheels don't fall off when you're on the way. It's, it's maintenance, but think about your car, but actually now it's your website. So it's, yeah, it's doing things like keeping hackers out and keeping it up to date and, and running well, basically performing well at all times. So. I mean, it, it, it's it's weird thinking about it really because I, I suppose being you know been involved in, in several everyone's work in businesses, you never really think, oh, what's the website doing and how how the importance of it. How how have you from getting through to other businesses and kind of selling your product? How have you found? Hey, have you found it easy? Have you found most people do know about the website but don't really? focus on it like what, what what have you been found in when you've been speaking to, to business uh, well the, the the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of small business owners don't even know that website maintenance is a service at all <laughs> um so there's a there's a big challenge from our point of view yeah. for them in terms of education yeah. so we're working quite hard a lot on the moment um on like creating video content and blog posts and all that sort of stuff that really is just that sort of first level of educating the customer yeah. um, on the fact that website maintenance is even a thing. Yeah. And then we're going to, obviously we kind of move them down that funnel to, um, you know, get them to download stuff or sign up for a free trial of the service. Um, so, so in that respect, it's, you know, it's not like they're buying a, I don't know, some dinner plates or knives and foot, you know, it's, it's quite a, yeah. it's a, it's a much more considered purchase that they're, they're having to make with kind of getting the website maintained. So it's quite a lot for us to do from an education perspective, but, um, and we've been, we've been delivering website maintenance as a service for years. It's, it's only now have we turned it into a product, um, in the form of glow, but what that's helped us do now that it is an app is that we've, we've got kind of, we've basically got like three different user types of glow. So we've got the, the small business owner um, that has the website that we can maintain and that's kind yeah. of directly through Glow. And then our second type of user is, is web development companies or, web, or freelance web developers who basically like us maintain multiple websites for clients. So they might have 50 clients and they're maintaining all of them, main, maintaining all of the websites. Yeah. Well, what they do now is basically use Glow as their tool to do that instead of close competitors if you get me um and then our third uh, user type is what we call our resellers so typically our resellers are marketing agencies um and usually marketing agencies don't offer website maintenance as a service and, and the reason for that is it's quite a fiddly little job basically and if you think of like decent sized creative marketing agencies in manchester city center or leeds city center the people working there don't want to faff around trying to fix forms on websites or you know you know this case kind of yeah no it's it's basically quite low level development work quite a lot of the time so they don't offer it because they're more focused on the kind of bigger strategic marketing campaigns that are making them a lot more money than than website maintenance does but what glow provides them with an opportunity to do is basically uh they can white label our app so it's fully branded as their business and then uh sell it to their clients but our team actually do all the work in the background so they can kind of sell it for a profit, but don't have, they don't have to do anything. So it's like a new recurring revenue stream with yeah. no cost of sale attached to it and no time involved. Amazing. So, so what's um, the, out of them three, which one's been the most successful at the moment in terms of, in terms of attracting people? Well, we're, we're focusing everything at the moment on the reseller market. So getting in front of more marketing agencies, basically. Um, we genuinely have solved a problem in, in, in the industry, which is that, uh, well, as I've said there, they're either not offering it at all, or if they are, they're often doing it for free and not charging anything for it because they haven't really got any process or structure behind. Well, you think about the, 
I don't know, your average web developer day, they're sat in front of the screen all day, of course, building applications and websites for customers. Mm -hmm. And then the, fa the phone might go and it's, you know, customer ABC, whatever they're called. And they go, oh, my form's not working on my contact page. Can we sort it out? So then they're getting distracted. So they're broken off the flow of the work they were doing. They've got to fix the form, which takes them, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes, half an hour sometimes. And if that's happening a few times throughout the week and the agency aren't charging for it, I mean, that's a huge amount of money yeah, lost. Yeah. Well, it's definitely um, going down there, concentrating on other things when they want to be concentrating on, on the, the yeah. whole aspect. So it's a perfect Precisely. remedy, isn't it? It's a perfect fix. Glow is just our comment, sit in that, in that space and, and do yeah. that. So it's amazing, really, for them. Exactly. And that's, that's what I mean by that problem that it's solved. It really is. It's, it's kind of like, um, I mean, we've done, this is all off research that we've done, you know, it's, um, it's not, I'm not kind of surmising it. We've, we've spoken to loads and loads of marketing agencies in the last year. And that's the, that's the commonality really is that they either don't do it. Now they don't do it or they do and they don't charge for it. So, um, it's, um, it's an exciting time for us. I'll be honest. It was just, you know, the, the, the more kind of demonstrations that we do with marketing agencies, the more that are signing up for it. So, um, I mean, yeah. obviously you mentioned the exciting times there. You, you've just been nominated for tech innovation of the year. One of the, one of the yeah. these digital city festival, which is yep. an amazing achievement in itself, considering you, you know, you were in, in January at the start of probably the worst year for anyone ever, you know, in business, like from for the last 10 years since, since you finished it. Uh, yeah. So probably it's, it's an amazing achievement itself, so congratulations on that. Really. Thank you. Um, but have you found that's elevated you a little bit and kind of know a little bit more about you already? Um, it's a great question. Uh, well, we only got nominated last Friday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess... Um, I guess time will tell on that one. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah hopefully. I think that's find the answer out. You know, I'm definitely thinking, yeah. you know, a few months down the line, we'll get you back on, see how, yeah. see how things <laughs> have gone and, and get an answer to that one. Yeah, it, and it's, it's, um, it's quite humbling, really, you know, as you say, yeah. we've, only, we've only been going a few months and, the, and the, um, the other businesses that are kind of up on the shortlist for the same award have been going for quite, quite a long time, really. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, it's nice to be in that kind of company and, and get some recognition for it so early on. So in terms of elevating me or, or, or Glow generally, not sure yet. Not but sure. that's the idea. That's why we're going for these awards, you see, because, oh, yeah. you know, it, it's just positive. It's positive news, isn't it? And like you say, it's in a year of, you know, well, let's face it, there's been a lot of negative news. So um, it's nice to be kind of helping drive things forward in, um, you know, in the north generally, um, in a very, well, a very overcrowded digital sector, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we spoke about that when we had a little chat, obviously. Before, yeah. And then we spoke about, you know, we said before startups and the community and, and the north in general, such a big sector for the digital, digital world, you know. Yeah. The importance of that community as well. Have you found being involved in that has helped you as well grow, you know, in terms of having people around you and having that community and that support network as such has, has helped. Yeah, massively. Yeah. And that's, I mean, really I've kind of, we've, 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 we've done that for years in terms of surrounding ourselves with other, other businesses in the area on like a local basis. Clearly, clearly Glow is a kind of, it's a product that knows no borders, right? I mean, we could, we could be selling to marketing agencies in the US or Australia, it wouldn't really matter, but um, the, the importance, I think, of the, that, that kind of local on the ground network can't be understated as, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's, um, yeah, it's really important just for your, um, well, your general kind of presence, I guess, in, in, in the business scene generally across the north. And that's why things like these award nominations are great because they, they, do, they do elevate you. I've no doubt about that. Um, how much? I'm not sure. Just we'll yet. But, um, we'll, Yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, but yeah, I, I've, I've, yeah, you're absolutely right. Well, it's kind of surround, we've always sort of surrounded ourselves with other businesses. And I think first and foremost in that kind of environment, it's, you know, getting to know people, building up those relationships and, seeing how you can help one another, really. You know, we're, we're in a world now where it's absolutely dominated by five or six enormous corporations, Google, Amazon, Facebook, etc. cetera. So um, I think that kind of local presence is hugely important for, um, for business. So, yeah, I mean, that's something we'll always continue to adopt, I think. Did you, in, did you lean on anyone at the start? Did you have a, a good close mm. relationship and, like, take counsel on board throughout yep. the uh, process? <laughs> Yep, certainly did. So I mean, when when I, well, 
I'm not going to pinpoint any one person in particular because yeah, the truth, yeah, yeah. Tr- truth is, you know, a number of people have helped me yeah. a lot with it. Um, and when I say helped, well, some more than others, of course, but so many that have just kind of been a uh, like a sounding board, just chatting yeah. through the concept with them, really. Um, however, the, the kind of first place, I guess, that I really started with it about a year ago, or it was about August time last year, was speaking to my existing client base. Yeah. Um, because when I, when I left that business partnership about a year and a half ago, I left with about, I had about 40, 50 clients that kind of moved with me to, to, to the new business. Yeah. And they were the first port of call. So I kind of thought of the, I guess, thought of the concept and the idea. And I wanted to know what they thought of it first, because obviously they were great people to ask, given that they've been working with us for a long time. So they, they clearly already must have understood the value of website maintenance in some regard to have been a customer and, and stayed with us and, and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, and it's, um, I think it's just absolutely vital. It's, it's that, and we're coming back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago in terms of that sort of local network. It's, it's great in terms of, you know, being able to make introductions to businesses and, and that kind of help, but just that general support and being able to put the phone to people that you know so well because you spend time building relationships with them. It's vital, absolutely vital. Would you, um, would you give that advice to someone looking to start now, say, you know, on their own, not really yeah. experienced in the world of business, to say, reach out to someone and, and find that mentor to help them grow? Uh, absolutely, 100% would do that. Yeah, if, you, if you're just starting out in business, that's exactly what I'd do. I'd be getting myself to local networking events of course at the moment they're not quite what they used to be i guess in terms of they're not really in person although maybe 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 getting back towards the time now where those those first kind of in-person ones are coming back again Um, yeah yeah. yeah. um but i would definitely be doing that yeah getting out and basically meeting as many people as you can in the local business community and starting to build up those relationships now it's never going to kind of get you get you business or clients as quickly as maybe a, a Google ad would do, I guess. But you, you're building those relationships for the longer term. Yeah. Um, and as I, as I, as I've just explained, really, they, you know, they're absolutely, um, well, they're invaluable, I think. Um, yeah. In terms of that, I, I, I always like to ask people who come on this, this question, and I think it, it's really insightful to, to, to answer as well. In, in terms of the best piece of advice you've ever been given, what would you say that is and, and kind of how would you develop that and kind of give it back to people out there now looking to start a business as well? The best piece of advice I've ever been given is an amazing question. There's, there's one, I can't remember the guy's name actually. <laughs> um, I genuinely can't remember his name, but, um, and we're going back to right at this very, very start when I set up a few years ago. Um, it was like a little seminar that I attended. Um, and truth be told, when I set up a business, I didn't have a bloody clue how to run a business. <laughs> Absolutely no idea to run, how to run a business. I knew how to build, you know, websites for, yeah. for businesses. But I, I didn't know how to get more clients or market myself or, you know, I didn't know any of that. Anyway, I, went, I turned, up, turned up at this seminar for a, for a morning and um, he said something that stuck, it, stuck in my mind for a long time, which was that if you want more sales, you need to see more people. And, and I thought, that's really, that's just, it, it just stuck with me for a long time. So, and he was right. I mean, obviously, clearly there's other ways to get sales, of course, yeah. but just that, that kind of, that kind of making sure you're always in front of people and building relationships. And yeah. again, we're going back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago. I think it's it absolutely bang on. It really shook a chord with me that clearly because seven years on, I can't remember the guy's bloody name, but I can remember what he said. Um, so, yeah, if you want more sales, see more people. I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, that's a good one, that. I like that. Yeah, that's yeah, still a minute. Headline as well for this. Don't worry. That's, that's there that. you go. <laughs> You're welcome. In, in terms of then, you, you mentioned then, you know, you didn't have a clue how to start businesses. Then. Uh, challenges yeah. then. What, what, what have you found is the most challenging thing about running a business? regardless of, you know, the fact that it's a website maintenance or whatnot, you know, what is the most challenging thing you've kind of, you've overcome? Uh, well, the biggest challenge I've overcome without a doubt was exiting the business that I exited a year and a half ago. It was, uh, uh, yeah, extremely uh, challenging for me personally and like mentally, it was really, really difficult to deal with. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, it was my choice for business. So kind of, it was... Um, a byproduct of, of my decision to, to do what I did. 
it shouldn't have got anywhere near as complicated and uh, stressful as it did, but it did. So, you know, um, so it was a challenge. It was a very difficult thing to deal with. Um, you know, there's, there was quite a number of people involved, obviously, with the whole thing. So um, kind of managing my way through that was, was tough. But that aside, I think in terms of like starting and growing a business, um, to kind of go back a few years, I think, I think what I always found the most challenging was the... Was the was the getting of the inquiry in the first place, the, the, um, the getting leads, inquiry. getting leads. Yeah, and and that's probably, a, again, like a product of the industry that we're in, which is web development. And there's a million and one bloody web developers. So yeah, yeah, yeah. being able to differentiate yourself in that industry yeah. is extremely difficult. Um, so I think that was probably one of the things that I've, that I, that, that I found most challenging. Glow is glow is very different. So now we're getting you know, all sorts of inquiries from left, right, and centre because it's because it's a very different product. Um, and then I think generally this is, I guess, probably less of a challenge that I face, but one that I know a lot of small businesses do face uh, is the concept of, of generating recurring revenue. Yeah. Um, God, I can think of actually there's loads more coming to mind now. But yeah, re recurring <laughs> revenue is um, it's like the golden goose, isn't it? Because yeah. if you've got recurring revenue as a small business and you're projecting forward, you can really much more confidently project forward, of course. If you know, you know exactly what's coming in September, you know exactly what's coming in October, and you're, you're building it up that way. Um, which is obviously what Glow's built on. Glow is completely monthly subscription-based. So um, yeah, it's fantastic in that regard. I think... Yeah, if if you're sort of just starting out in business, that would be that would be one big thing I would be looking at. Um, aside from the stuff we've talked about already, would be, you know, how can you kind of productize what you've got and what you're offering? Can you turn that into some kind of um, monthly payment system? Because yeah. any kind of investor or company coming along in the future that wants to buy your business, if that indeed is your goal, of course, to sell it, then that's one you know, great tick in the box is regular recurring revenue and even better, even better if it's on a contract, I would have thought as well. So, um, yeah, yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I mean, in terms of then the future for Glow, what, what, what's the plan? How, how do people kind of get in touch with you to get involved? Whether you're, you know, your standalone web developer or the, the marketing agency wanting the resale aspect, how, how, how's best to get in touch with you and what's the plan for the future? Uh, well, getting in touch with us is pretty easy. You can go to our website, which is uh, getglow.io. Um, Hello as well. We'll get that in the comments for you, mate. Don't worry. Excellent. So I like to hear. And then uh, you can connect with me on LinkedIn as well. So just search Phil Story. Um, obviously, when you see Glow, you'll know that's me. Um, plans for the future. We do, we do definitely want to kind of expand globally and you know, pick up um, clients across the world. Um, we've got a couple of competitors in our sites that we want to firstly catch up with uh, and then overtake. So um, there's, a, there's a big one over in the US and there's one over on the other side of the world as well. So, um, yeah, we've got starting in Yorkshire, though, first. Yeah, why <laughs> not? Yorkshire, Yorkshire and Lancashire. Yeah. yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Start there and then, uh, yeah, yeah. It's um, yeah, big plans. We're really excited about it. So. Yeah, so just on that, just a, a, a quick mm. little side note, um, you mentioned that takeover globally. What's your plans then with the whole working aspect and, and then the remote working about that in the future? Uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to employ really developers in, in yeah. multiple time, different time zones. Yeah. Um, so at the moment, our kind of, uh, support ticket system is live seven days a week so it's 7 a.m. till 10 o'clock at night seven days a week which is great and really helpful for businesses because I don't know let's say you have an issue with your website on a Friday night you don't want to wait till Monday morning till it's sorted out do you so um, however I would like that to be a 24-7 offering eventually um, but of course to do that you know we're going to need developers around the world to be able to kind of manage that and yeah those couple of bigger companies that I referenced before have, have got that kind of set up so um, that's what we'll be going for eventually yeah. Um, but there's plenty of business to go out in the UK. Plenty yeah, of business to go out in the UK. So yeah. Starting here first, mate. Yeah. And let's hope. Let's hope. You know, people watching, any any of the developers watching, any of the marketing agencies watching, you know, get in touch with in touch with Phil. Have a look at the product. It's phenomenal. You know, you go on the website, you can see it. Thank all. you. And that's why you've been nominated as well for Tech Innovation of the Year. So again, a big congratulations on that, mate. Um, I really appreciate it. 
Phil is in Barcelona at the moment, hence the, the sunglasses. So he's going off to a nice beach now. Um, well, <laughs> we all go back to work. So, no, thank you so much, mate, for taking the time out of your day. Uh, to yeah, no worries. Thanks. Me, Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the show as much as I did. Uh, fantastic talking to Phil. Uh, some great insight there. You know, that that glow and the company he's doing and the, the web dev and the web maintenance and the, everything about it is going to go really far. Um, he's doing some fantastic work. As I said, got nominated for an award. Um, and he, he's just really, really great guy, really good at scaling. But if you'd like to, to come on the show as well, I'd love to talk to you. Your story might be a little bit different to Phil's. And well, come on the show, tell me a bit about it and, and let's see if we can we can tell the world about your story and provide some insight to people looking to start a business out there. Um, thank you for watching. My details are up next if you want to get in touch or drop me a comment. Thank you.